Hi everyone! I am so excited oh, to talk about my Victober TBR. This is one of my absolute favorite videos to film every year and I can't wait to tell you all of the exciting things I'm wanting to read. Okay, so firstly, last year was my first successful poetry year for Victober and the first time I tried poetry, uh, I tried Alfred Lord Tennyson's Idols of the King, and that was way too intimidating, the big narrative. Um, then I tried reading an ebook of Emily Bronte's poetry, didn't work. Tried doing an audiobook, didn't work. And last year I did a physical book of Christina Rossetti's poems, and it was like a little, um, I don't think it was all of her poetry. Um, so I just thought, I'm gonna keep going that route. I was successful last year, but it's complicated. So um, I purchased this used and it is, there are pages that are falling out um, and it's really depressing to read a, like a new to you book where the pages are falling out. Plus, I mean, this is really, and I know this is so superficial, like you don't have to love covers, but isn't that like some of the fun of books is liking how they look. Um, and I had some birthday money. This is what happens with my birthday money every year because it's in August, right when I get excited about Victober. And I purchased a Everyman's, uh, Everyman, li Everyman's Library Pocket Poem Edition of Gerard Manley Hopkins Poetry. Um, and uh, I am really excited that I'm gonna have like a very pretty edition um, because it really appealed to me every day to see this beautiful Penguin English Library Christina Rossetti poetry collection and it was a great experience for me. Um, so Gerard Manley Hopkins and then I also purchased one of Tennyson's poems and I felt maybe that's how I should approach Tennyson because I am such a newbie to poetry. I only read a little bit each year um, and I need to not do the big narratives because they just intimidate me. Um, so I haven't decided if I'm going to read Tennyson or Gerard Manley Hopkins. Um, it just depends on the mood I'm in, but I like keeping that free and open. I will just stick to one poet, I think, um, and then more on poetry later. Uh, then for a, I like to do a reread every year and it ties in very nicely with the Jane Eyre read along. I'm hosting with Emily from Novelle Novels and we're using hashtag Victober at Thornfield, which I think is just such a fun hashtag. Um, and we're going to be reading Jane Eyre. There's going to be a Zoom book discussion. There is also going to be, we're going to watch uh, the movie, the 2011 film adaptation together. Um, and I'm going to scooch over so I can give myself space to put up pictures there um, and uh, chat in an Instagram group for that. So lots of fun happening with Jane Eyre. Then I am also hosting a uh, Stitch and Listen with Natalie from Curious Reader and we are going to be listening to Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy. Um, I have really loved some Thomas Hardy books and I've heard some good things about this one from Hardy fans. So I'm looking forward to this one and especially hosting with Natalie and doing a beautiful um, William Morris cross stitch and more on William Morris on my channel later. And um, so we are using the hashtag Starcross Stitchers for that. And I'm really looking forward. So if you are into any sort of hobby, arts and crafts, handicraft, join us while we listen to Two on a Tower. Use the hashtag on social media and let us know what you are making while listening. Okay, then we move on to the challenges. Um, Lucy's challenge, which is fabulous. You're supposed to read a diary or letters. And I have two diaries that I'm torn between. So again, I'll pick when I'm closer to it. One is Kilbert's Diary um, by Francis Kilbert. He was a Victorian clergyman and this is his diary. It was only published in, I think the forties, but he was um, totally, he wrote all this from 1870 to 1879. Um, yeah, 1944 was when they found it. And it's just supposed to be really, really lovely and pastoral and have funny anecdotes, all sorts of things. So I definitely want to get to this. Um, but then I also, I love Amelia B. Edwards' ghost story, The Phantom Coach. It made such an impact on me. And this is her travel journal called Untrodden Peaks and Unfrequented Valleys. She was a very unconventional lady. And she also has a, um, a book called A Thousand Miles Up the Nile. That's about her travels in Egypt. But um, I heard from Juliana at Blank Garden 
had these beautiful Virago, like uh, Virago Travelers editions. And this is one of the ones that I purchased. I purchased a couple more. Um, and, uh, oh, there's even a couple, is that a picture? Let's see. Oh, it's a drawing, but it's a beautiful drawing. Um, so yes, this is her traveling, um, the little explored mountains of Southeastern Tyrol in 1872. So I need to look that up. So this ha happened before her trip to the Nile. So maybe it's good. I would read this one first. Uh, okay, then Katie's fabulous challenge of reading something equivalent to your favorite modern genre. So I was a little bit torn between fairy tale retelling or mystery, but I went with mystery because Jezebel's Daughter by Wilkie Collins intrigued me. And I was pleased when I received it in the mail to see how short it is because I often can bite off more than I can chew for Ficktober. Um, and this is uh, how far is a mother prepared to go to secure her daughter's future? Um, and I don't know much about it other than that, but this cover, I mean, come on. Don't you want to get to know about her? She's Madame Fontaine, um, widow of an eminent chemist. So we will see what happens with her. Um, you know she's going to be evil too because she's not British. That is like such a trope of Victorian literature. Okay, um, then for my prompt of reading new material from an author that one of your favorite authors, I will be doing both Elizabeth Gaskell and George Eliot. From Elizabeth Gaskell, I'm going to be reading um, The Crooked Branch, Right at Last, Six Weeks at Heppenheim and Disappearances. These are all short stories from her that I have not read before this and can't wait to read some new Elizabeth Gaskell material. And then for George Eliot, I am finally, I have this on a TBR, maybe the first of October, um, for Scenes of Clerical Life. And it is three little novellas or short stories. The line between them is kind of blurry sometimes, but I've heard really good things about this, these collections and Elizabeth Gaskell really liked them. So if Elizabeth Gaskell likes them, then that's a good sign. Okay. Um, then the group read is Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. Um, I know these Wordsworth editions are dirt cheap. Um, so they probably aren't that sturdily made, but I really like how they look. They're kind of campy, but I think they're fun. Anyhow, this will be my second time reading Shirley. Um, and I had, uh, I really liked certain aspects about it. So I wasn't like that thrilled once I heard this was going to be the group read. But then the more I've been thinking about it and purchasing like a copy of it, I'm getting really excited. And I did it a disservice where I listened to an audiobook with really annoying terrible French accents. Like you could tell they were trying way too hard. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I want to give this another try. I want to annotate a ton because it has some beautiful quotes and this is delightfully floppy. So, okay. Um, I feel like the most hyper you guys see me are in my Victoria videos. Okay. Uh, next up buddy read with Tom from Tom Reads Things. We buddy read Dickens last October and we are doing it again this October. We are going to be reading Martin Chuzzlewit. Now, tragically, my copy got boxed up before I realized Tom and I were doing a buddy read. So I will get a copy from the library. Um, the library is open to an extent. You can like reserve things and pick them up. So I will utilize the library for that. And um, I'm excited to read with Tom. He's just brilliant and he makes everything fun. Um, so Martin Chuzzlewit is a chunker, but it, I only have two chunkers this year, which I'm really excited about. Um, Okay, then the reader's choice challenge. Super fun. Uh, pick a, like, recycle something on your TBR. Uh, and so I put a couple years ago, um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I still have not read any Robert Louis Stevenson, which is ridiculous because he's so iconically Victorian. Um, so I will be reading Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and I think it's just going to be really great as an audiobook. I wanted something really spooky this year, and um, that's what I'll be reading. Then it has now become tradition to read a Mary Elizabeth Braddon book with Kate from The Novel Nomad. So we will be reading Aurora Floyd. Um, there is some mystery about the life of Aurora Floyd. Uh, and so you are following her. Uh, deceit, blackmail, and even violence disturb the usually tranquil Victorian hearth. So love a good sensation novel to sink my teeth into. They're very um, 
uh, they're very much page turners, which is fun to have some more serious books and then to have some nice variety in there. So yes, I shall be reading Aurora Floyd. Kate always has such interesting observations. I'm not talking about myself in third person. Kate from the novel Nomad always has such interesting observations about literature and I just, she's a delight to read with. So yes, we will be reading Aurora Floyd. Um, then um, I now have another tradition and that is to do a read aloud with Peter. Last year we did The Princess and the Goblin and we both were like middling on it, like maybe like three stars about it. Um, but it was fun to read together and he really liked the ending. Um, so we are going to be picking up, I heard about this book from Sam at A Bear and a Bee's Books, uh, The Children of the New Forest. This is historical fiction. It's set during the English Civil War. So I think it's cool to read historical fiction from another era, written about a different era, um, all of these jumps. And these children, they're four orphans, and they're kind of just taking care of themselves in the new forest. Um, so it sounds really fun. This cover's really, really ugly. But the, uh, the like next book costs like $20 for a paperback. And I don't even know if I like the book. So I wasn't willing to part with that much for it. Um, okay, then just checking my list, making sure I don't miss anything. Okay, the next one I'm really excited about. Uh, because I just love um, Three Men in a Boat and Diary of a Nobody, those comic novels. And so I think I have found one that might, you know, come into the ranks with that. I heard about from Kaylee at Books for MKs, and it is The Wrong Box by Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson. So reading some more of him uh, this year, and it is a dark comedy. And so um, there are two brothers and it's this race to see who will die first so the other one gets the inheritance. And at the time, critics hated it because Victorians did not joke about death. Like you just did not. Um, this is really glaring. All right, I had to close that blind because the glare had gotten so bad. Um, so it was just really lost on Victorian audiences. But now it seems really funny. And there is a movie from 1966 with Peter Sellers and uh, Michael Caine that I will definitely be watching after I um, read the book. And, or it's almost a novella. It's like 180 pages, I think. Um, and uh, it just looks really fun. The movie seems to have a similar vibe uh, to those of you that have seen What's Up Doc, the film from the 60s, kind of a screwball comedy. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, and then I want to, I got this last year and still haven't read it, Kim by Rudyard Kipling. So I am intimidated by this book, but it is, um, I didn't realize how long the appendix is. How exciting is that? <laughs> Um, okay, it's about 280 pages. Um, so hopefully I will enjoy this. Uh, I did like The Jungle Book. I didn't love it. Um, but I've heard good things about this from Bookish Princess. So I want to try it. Finally, I am going to be reading a Penny Dreadful. I'm so excited. So for those of you um, that watch my video on my literary parlor, my like Victorian book club that I run, we for an afternoon sat and started reading episodes out of this. Um, and it was such a hoot. Like Penny, if you think um, sensation novels are campy, like you have not read Penny Dreadfuls. Um, it's just so over the top with the drama. Um, but so in a way, this might make me laugh because it's going to be so ridiculous. Uh, it is long. It is around 600 pages. So I, I'm not pressuring myself to um, read this all over Victober, and I might just try for an episode a day, um, see how that works out. Uh, then I would like to continue in my Victorian ghost stories. Over the course of April, I did read aloud uh, four or five of these, and then I got a little bogged down with the project. I got kind of tired of it, so I didn't continue with that. But I would like to continue with these ghost stories because whenever I sit down with them, I'm so glad that I'm reading them. There are some really amazing ones. Um, and then we come to the last book. And this I found on the Victorian Secret Publishers website, and I, I had to. So this is called Vice Versa, and this is the inspiration for the 60s and 2000s movie Freaky Friday. I mean, how could I not pick this up? Um, so yes, it is... 
After delivering a pompous lecture to his son, Stuffy Paul Bultitude declares his wish to be a schoolboy once more so he can enjoy the carefree existence of youth. Unfortunately for him, he happens to be clutching the mysterious and magical Garuda Stone and suddenly finds himself transformed into the, into the diminutive body of his son. Come on. And it's not very long. Um, 250 pages? 230 pages. So... This could be a scream. And of course, as always, I have a whole bunch of other stuff that I want to read. It's kind of ridiculous, but I thought I would cap it there. I was more self-controlled with my TBR last year. I don't know what has happened to me. Lastly, I wanted to ask you, I was thinking of hopping on Instagram each morning and doing a live and reading aloud something, and it would be there for 24 hours for you. If technology was on my side, I could save them, save the videos. Sometimes it lets you save them after lives and then upload like omnibuses to YouTube. I don't know if that would work, so don't count on that. But would you, if you would like me to read aloud to you, um, if my voice doesn't drive you crazy, uh, would you prefer to have poetry read to you? So me reading a poem each morning or to have Wagner the werewolf? please let me know in the comments down below. I will be reading these either way. So it doesn't really make a difference to me. And I think it would be fun to have that be my morning ritual each time. So I hope you have enjoyed my PBR. Let's make this the best Victober yet. It's the 5th Victober, which is a super big deal. I can't wait to see all of your TBRs, what you are reading and um, chatting with you in the comments on Instagram. Don't forget to post hashtag Victober, hashtag Victober 2020. And um, for those of you that are joining in with Jane Eyre, chatting in the Zoom group and seeing all of your handicrafts for Starcross Stitchers. Thank you for watching. I will be back with Victober videos very soon.